testing. Good morning. F2.
Good morning. A very happy and blessed new year to you all. Uh, my name is Pastor Fritz Fowler, and I serve here as the lead pastor. And it's a joy to welcome you this morning to worship on this Epiphany and Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. Uh, if you are new to Trinity or visiting, a special welcome to you. We're grateful that you're here. We hope that throughout today's worship service, you feel God's love uh, surrounding you and that uh, you leave here inspired uh, for the week ahead. A special welcome to those of you who are joining us online on Facebook, YouTube, or on our website. You can find a copy of today's worship service uh, on our website at trinitylansdale.com, trinitylansdale.com. If you go to the very bottom of the homepage, you'll see a button that says weekly slash bulletin. If you click on that, you can find a copy of uh, today's bulletin there. If you are... Um, uh, uh, um, we are excited this morning to have some special visitors with us, and so our opening liturgy this morning will be slightly different. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to share with you a number of um, a number of some news about a number of members who have entered into eternal life over this past week. The first of those was Dr. Arlo Anderson, uh, who died on Christmas Day. We gathered with his family on Friday afternoon here in our committal, and his funeral was held on Friday afternoon. Mrs. Betsy T. Meyer died on January 1st, and her funeral is scheduled for Friday, January 27th at 2 p.m. at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church in Autobahn. Martha Hopkins' funeral uh, will be held on Thursday, January 12th at 10 a.m. with a visitation and a uh, funeral at 11 a.m. followed by a luncheon that will take place at St. John's Lutheran Church in Bluebell. And finally, Edith Richter also died this past week. Her funeral will be, is being planned for a little bit later in January, and we'll share those exact details with you uh, when we have them um, confirmed. We will be praying for each of these uh, folks as they are committed to God's care in our prayers this morning, but I do ask that you keep their families and all those who loved and knew them in your prayers this week. We begin our worship service today with our gathering hymn, We Three Kings. We'll be singing verses 1 through 4. You're invited to stand as you are able.
This is the Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. You may be seated. In the time of King Herod, after Bethlehem had been born in... (laughs) In the time of King Herod, after Jesus had been born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When Herod heard this, he was afraid, as was all of Jerusalem with him. Herod called together all the chief priests and scribes of the people and ask of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so the prophet has written, and you, O Bethlehem of Judah, are by no means least of the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. So then Herod secretly met with the wise men to learn from them the exact time they had seen the star at its rising. And then he told them, go to Bethlehem, search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I too may go and pay him homage. Having heard from the king, the wise men set out and followed the star they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Upon entering the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then they presented them gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And then, having learned in a dream and been warned not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by a different road. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. O God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at the last to the full vision of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Gospel of, the Gospel of St. Matthew, beginning at the 13th cha- third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly, suddenly the heavens were open to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him and a voice from heaven saying, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And this, my friends, is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the assembly to be seated, and I invite all of our young folks to come up, our young folks, our young at heart folks, or anybody else. So now's one. Thank God, time for God's oh, yeah, yeah. Hey guys, how are you? Good, 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 good. Everybody have a really good Christmas? Uh, New Year's wasn't that great? Oh my, you only got seven hours of sleep. You what? You were on a battleship. <coughs> I don't know if I should pursue this conversation or not. I don't, I, I don't know. Well, I'm sorry, you know, as, you know, as you get old like us, you know, when you only get seven hours of sleep, it's really, it's hard. I, and I, I understand that, believe, believe me. So, how about the rest of you, okay? So, Today, we're celebrating a lot of stuff today here in the church. You know what? You guys want to come down here and you see, yeah, we can all, so we can all be here. Come on down. Come on over here. All right. So, yes, you can come over. <laughs> or not. Um, so today, we're celebrating a lot of stuff. We're talking about these kings or these wise men that came from, uh, from, from who knows where, and they came to give gifts to Jesus. And we're talking about Jesus getting baptized, and I don't know what else we can say. I have a little quiz for you, though, a little question for you before we go any further. So who can tell me? We just saw those kings come in, and they were bringing gifts to Jesus. So who can remember again what they brought? What? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, right? How many of you got frankincense for Christmas to this year? Or myrrh? Anybody get gold for Christmas? No, okay. I was going to say, let me, well, well, we won't go there. All right, so they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Very good. So who can tell? Well, we, we probably most of us know what gold is, right? You've probably seen your mom or dad with, with gold jewelry on or, or, or something like that or rings or something like that, maybe. However, frankincense. Who can tell me what frankincense is? Um, it's like the spice that you put on dead bodies. <laughs> A spice that you put on dead bodies. Well, you're almost right. <laughs> That's actually the myrrh, okay? But there are other uses for it. That is one thing. They did put it, they did use that for, for when Jesus died. But, but there, there are other things that they, that, they, that they use the myrrh. And frankincense, sometimes, sometimes in church, sometimes in church you'll see, you'll see uh, different churches, they'll use incense. Okay, and incense, it's a smelly stuff, it's smoky and it smells, and it smells okay, but that's where the frankincense, that's what the, was one of the things, the frankincense, and the myrrh, of course, is, is as, as you just said, it's a spice, it's, a, it's something that they use for a lot of different purposes, but yes, they do happen to use it for preserving bodies also, but we won't go there, 
All right. So, none of you got frankincense. So, so what, why do you think they brought these? If, Jesus, if you were going to see Jesus today, what would you have taken to him? Anybody? If we were going to see the little baby, I don't think I would have taken gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Maybe a stuffed animal or, or what? Something else? A rattle? What? The stuff that we put in the lobby. The stuff that we put in the lobby. I mean, that we put in the, um, the baskets. Oh, the stuff that we put in the baskets. Okay. Okay, that would be nice. Okay. Well, I think one of the reasons, so these gold, this frankincense, and myrrh were actually very, very valuable. The, of course, we know that gold is very valuable, but frankincense and myrrh were also very, very valuable. And they were coming to Bethlehem to see who? To see someone who they thought was a king or a messiah or something like that. So they, there was nothing good enough. It's like, it's like when you really, really, really like somebody or you really love somebody, you, know, you want to give them something that's really very special. And that's probably why they were bringing gold and frankincense. These were very, very, very expensive. And, and probably it was meant more for Mary and Joseph than actually for the baby, but it was something very, very special to them, okay? And that's what we do when we, when we really like somebody, when we really, when, or, or when you're in love with somebody, you want to give them something very, very special. So we remember today that, that Jesus has come into our life as our king, he's something very special. He come to come into to, to surround us with his love, and the, so there's really almost nothing we can do that's that's too valuable to give to give to Jesus and to, to, to show our love for him. Okay, so why don't we have a quick prayer, and then we're going to have wiggle time with Miss Jane, and she can go over during 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 our sermon. Okay, so let's pray, and then maybe the folks in the congregation will help us. Dear God, okay. thank you. Thank you for giving us your son, your son, your son, Jesus Christ, to surround us with his love and your love and caring. Help us always to show that same love to those in our presence and all those we care about. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for coming up. And Miss Jane is, where is Miss Jane? She's over there. She's right over there. Okay. And you have fun? Okay. And thank you so much. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and His Son, our Lord Jesus, the newborn Christ. Amen. Amen. I feel excited today. I'm excited about, you know, I think about all these lessons that we've been hearing during Advent and Christmas, and now the story of the wise men coming to Bethlehem and the baptism of Jesus and they're so familiar. We've been hearing them most, probably most of our lives. They're stories that we've heard in one form or from one source or another. They're these stories that we have, and, and it's what Christmas is about. It's about these stories that we hear and, and, and the, the, the message that they, uh, that they bring to us. If you were here, uh, I hope that many of you, if not all of you, were here on Christmas Eve. It was, it was such a glorious, glorious night. By the end, by, by 10.30 at the, last, at the end of the last service, when the whole church was lit with candlelight and things, I was almost in tears. It was like, it was such a moving in the music and the liturgy and the preaching. It was so, so exciting. And now today, we hear these lessons about the epiphany and about baptism, and it kind of puts a period for me. It kind of puts a period at the end of the the Christmas, the, the celebration that we've been doing going until we now move into a new portion of, of the year. But as I reflect on these lessons that we were so familiar and mean so much to all of us, 
as I reflect on them, I, I think about all those people, all those people who were in church on Sunday. I mean, there were well over a thousand people here come to hear the word of God. And I think about them, and I, many of them, longtime members, people who have moved away and come back and, and meeting good friends. But there are also a group of people, I'm sure, that were here that, how should we put it, maybe they're kind of on the fringe, what I call, of, of church. Maybe kind of on the fringe of their faith life. Pastor, Pastor Fritz made a comment in his sermon on Christmas Eve about, about all the people that were there, even, even those who were there who really didn't want to be there. They could have been home watching the Eagles game that night, but, but they were there in, in church for one reason or another. I think, about, I think about so many of those people. And I think about these lessons, these lessons we've been hearing, the services all that we've been having during Advent, Christmas, and, and now today. And I couldn't help but wonder, do these lessons, do, do, they, do they speak to these people that, that are kind of on the fringe? Do they speak to us? Yes, I, I, yes, I love the tradition. I love all the Christmas carols. I love all that. But do they speak to these folks on Monday morning, when Wednesday morning, when they're back to work? back to the routine, the tree is down, the decorations are down, and we're back to the, almost the humdrum of daily life and daily issues. I thought about them. Because truth be told, as beautiful as these lessons are, as beautiful as all the lessons are, they can be challenging, can't they? They can be challenging for me, and I suspect for you also. I think, about, I think about the lesson, the, the, the lesson today, the, 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 the story that, that uh, Mary just told us about the, the, uh, the wise men coming to, coming to Bethlehem. You know, uh, we, the, the, the commentators were telling us that these wise men, probably not actually kings, but, but wise men, learned men, commentators tell us they were probably from, from the east, some country, Persia, or some place east of, east of Bethlehem, east of the Jordan. And they were probably astrologers, learned people, some, mag some they thought they had magical qualities about them. But then I think, wait a minute. Wait a minute, we heard about these old kings, these wise men coming today, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, Pastor Fritz was telling us about, he was reading from the, 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 the writings of, of St. Luke. And there we heard about shepherds, shepherds in the fields watching their flocks by night came. Shepherds who were on the lowest rung of society, the dregs of society, the outcasts almost, smelly individuals. Well, well which was it? Was it kings or was it shepherds? Or was it both? Did the shepherds come first and then the kings? Or do we really know? And then, and then moving on, I think, about, I think about that light, that star, that star that guided them. I, I understand that. But in my 70-some years of living, I've never, I've never experienced a light a star so bright that it could, could guide me from, from, from Lansdale to get to Doylestown or Philadelphia or something. What was that? We've had moonlight nights, I know that. It's hard, hard to relate what that must have been like to see, to experience such a light that would guide them. And then, and then as we just saw these 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 wise men, or kings as we call them today, they came first, they, first they went to, they stopped it and, and paid a homage to, to, to Herod, and then he, they directed them to, to where the, the child, where the newborn child was in Bethlehem, 
And the text tells us what the, that when they went to Herod, they, they just visited him and had him, got instructions and so on. And then they went, and then they went to, to Bethlehem, got to Bethlehem, and they knelt down and paid homage to this child. They never, they never knelt down before Herod. They never really paid homage to him. He was the emperor. He had incredible power over them. But instead, they come to this infant. You know, if we go back, we go, we go back to Paul's writing in the book of Philippians, we, we learn there that, that Jesus gave up all his well, his heavenly powers and, and became human. He became a man. So this infant there, while we later learn that he is indeed the Messiah, as these wise men come, we're talking about a baby, a human being, a baby, an infant, a young child. And they knelt before him. But they hadn't knelt before Herod, the emperor, who had incredible powers over him, over them. It's hard, it can be hard to relate. They're beautiful, as beautiful as the stories are, as much as I look forward to, as much as I want to hear them every year and look forward to hearing them. It can be hard on Monday morning. What is this for me? And then, and then today, Today we move into, into this lesson that Matthew shares with us about the baptism of Jesus. And we meet Jesus, we, we, now, we now skip over, we, we, we skip ahead 30 years from, from that scene with the, the wise men to today now with the baptism. We skip over Jesus' adolescence, which as we all know can be turbulent. We skip over his formative years when he was in his 20s. And now as, he enters, we, as we enter the lesson, he encounters John, John the Baptist, who's already busy baptizing, busy baptizing other individuals. And Jesus comes up to John and asks him to, to baptize him. And Jesus, of course, has said, no, I, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. It is you who needs to baptize me. But finally, finally, John consents and he agrees to baptize, John, uh, baptize Jesus. And Jesus comes up out of the water and it says, the Spirit of God descending like a dove and the lightning on him, and a voice from heaven. A voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Wow. They're moving words. But again, in my life, in the life that I live, it's hard to put my finger on that experience. I've experienced God's presence. I've ex I have felt God with me. But I've never heard, I've never had this voice come out. I've never experienced the heavens opening up or like a dove coming down. As I said, I love, I believe in these lessons that they were here. But they can be hard. They can really be hard at times. As I, the more I thought about this, then I, I went back to, to Matthew and I, I, I continued reading it a little bit. And in the very, very next verse from what we heard today, the very next verse, it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I read those words. I thought, at last, 
Here's something I can relate to. I know about wildernesses. I understand wildernesses. I remember wildernesses out and ha having done a lot of camping with my, my, my best friend Dan in Pennsylvania and any forests, state forests. I understand the wildernesses as, as my family and I, as, as we, we as Linda and, and, and Megan and I drove through the various national parks and we went through some of the forests. I understand the beauty that's there. But I also understand the loneliness and the isolation that you can feel when you're around, in the middle of that forest. I can remember exploring some trails in the forest and feeling this kind of gut feeling, where is this trail going? Are we going to find our way back? It's a very lonely feeling. But then I went from the literal wilderness. I started thinking a little bit about some figuratively wildernesses in our lives. I thought about that football player, Darren Hamlin. I thought about that I had a cardiac arrest last Sunday during a football game. I thought about the wilderness the wilderness that his family must have traversed this week. What's going to happen? Is he going to live? And now, even now, as he shows signs of recovery, what's ahead? Where is this trail going to lead? I thought about those, those, those four students out in Idaho who were, mur who were murdered. And for weeks, I thought about their families, what the wilderness must have been like for their families. Wondering, who did this? Is he, is he right, is a person right around us? And now, now that someone has been apprehended and, and, and so on, now, now they start the trail on a new wilderness of the legal system and all the legal maneuvering that will take place. And I thought about, I thought about some of the wildernesses that you folks have shared with Pastor Fritz and, and with me. Wildernesses of your, of illnesses. People we have, both of us have visited in the hospital and these and fear, What's, what, where is this going? Am I ever gonna get better? Or wildernesses of relationships that, how is this ever going to end? Where is this relationship? Whether it's a marriage or whether it's, or whatever it is, how is this going to work out? At this time of year, I think of, I think about so many of our, our young people, our young people in, in high school and, and, and so on, trying to discern what's next and, and kind of the fear that's next. In their guts of school, high school is finally ending, but now where? Or will be people more like myself who might be retired, who might be, but, but what now? The wilderness of suddenly no, suddenly no career or something behind us. Wildernesses can be very frightening. Beautiful sometimes but also very frightening at times. I read those words. And then I re-read that verse. And then Jesus was led up by the serpent, by the spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And I realized Jesus was led up by the spirit. I realized at that point, so he's not in that wilderness by himself, but rather he has the assurance 
that God is with him. He is not alone, but he's been led up there by the Spirit. And then my mind went back and, and that event in the previous chapters, Jesus' baptism, all started to make some new sense to me. When Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up out of the, suddenly the heavens were open and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This wasn't a private conversation between God and Jesus coming up out of the water. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. You're the one. No, this was God announcing to all the world, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. That's his announcement to us this morning. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of wilderness in this world, aren't there? Literally as well as figuratively. But for me, the good news is that we enter these wildernesses not alone, even though sometimes it feels like we're very alone, but with a promise, with the assurance that God is with us. God's Spirit is with us to surround us, to love us, to comfort us, to guide us. And that, my friends, I think, is the joyous what we celebrate as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. The baptism of Jesus, not just for Jesus, but for all of us. And the gift that God gives us by sharing his spirit with us. Amen. We continue by singing our hymn of the day, Christ for us, when we were baptized. Let us stand as we are able.
called together to follow Jesus. We pray for the church and all in need. Calling God, you speak with power to your church. Open our hearts and minds to the new things you are declaring. Strengthen bishops, pastors, deacons, lay leaders, and teachers of the faith. Equip the baptized for your reconciling and redeeming work. God of grace. Renewing God, you provide the waters of the earth, and in Jesus' baptism, you reveal the waters of life. Cleanse and protect oceans and rivers and watersheds. Bring relief to parched lands and to communities without access to safe water. God of grace. Righteous God, you never weary of establishing justice. Increase in cooperation and constructive dialogue between nations. Guide local, national, and international authorities to govern with equity, vision, and integrity. We pray for those in military service, for peacemakers, and for our enemy, for and for our enemies. God of grace, abiding God, your mercy is steadfast. Give sanctuary to people who flee from oppression, war, poverty, and famine. Sustain health care workers, caregivers, first responders, counselors and all who help and heal. Comfort those who are grieving or experiencing crises. Especially today, we pray for all those on our prayer list and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For all experiencing winter storms and significant weather events. For the Colorado River as it faces continued drought in all places facing a shortage of water. For the eternal rest of Pope Emeritus Benedict and for all who mourn his death. For those hurt and killed around the world in violent acts and on New Year's Eve. For those grieving tragic injuries and deaths across our nation and our world from gun violence. For those recovering from the earthquakes this past week in Northern California. For the rebuilding of relationships and open borders between Colombia and Venezuela. For the House of Representatives and for the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. We pray also for Kathy. Thomas and Carol. Lord, keep them in, our, in, your, in your everlasting love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Blessing God, in Christ you gathered the beloved community. Kindle the gifts of your spirit in your people. Accompany the newly baptized, those recently ordained, and any beginning a new ministry. Inspire synodical leaders, and congregational councils to serve with imagination and wisdom. God of grace, promising God, your faithfulness endures throughout all generations. We give you thanks for those who have died in Christ. Especially today, we pray for Dr. Arlo Anderson, Betsy T. Meyer, Martha Hopkins, and Edith Richter that we will be united with them and all the saints in Christ's resurrection life. God of grace, we bring you all our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. Be people of God, the peace of Christ is with you always. I invite you to share that peace with those around you. Oops.
As you finish sharing the piece, I invite you to be seated. In just a moment, Daybreak is going to lead us in our musical offering, but we just want to express a word of gratitude for uh, those of you who continue to support and sustain the ministries of Trinity Lutheran Church. If you would like to give a gift today, there are offering baskets. There's two on each side here in the front on the altar rail that you're invited to bring your offering and place it in, either at the end of the service or when you come forward for Holy <laughs> Communion. For those of you joining us online, or for those who prefer to give electronically, you can do so at trinitylansdale.com, trinitylansdale.com. Let us continue our worship service this morning with our musical offering. As Dave's coming forward to offer our offering prayer, there will be four stations today for Holy Communion. There will be one in front of each of the transepts and then two here in the front. You'll be invited to come forward with your hand stretched out flat. A wafer will be placed in the palm of your hand. You're then invited to pick that wafer up and dip it into one of the chalices that contains red alcoholic wine. If today you prefer gluten-free wafers, grape juice, or sterile packets that contain both bread and grape juice, those can be found on the brown tables that you're going to pass by as you come forward this morning. You're welcome to kneel or stand around the altar rail in prayer and reflection before returning to your seats. Near each of the front pillars, there is a plastic bowl that if you do have an individual cup, you can place that in. We continue together by praying the offering prayer. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. We magnify and endure you through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. People of God, I invite you to stand as you are able as we can continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations, and the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. In the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He poured it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the blood of my covenant, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come, taste the joy of God. Thanks be to God. The assembly is invited to be seated as the uh, communion assistants come forward and we sing together the Lamb of God. Body of Christ given to you. Body of Christ.
Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and keep you to life everlasting. Claim your wholeness, live in forgiveness, dwell in God's grace and peace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning here for worship at Trinity Lutheran. Uh, following the dismissal, everyone is invited to join us for a coffee uh, in the lobby. There are some refreshments, uh, some snacks prepared for you. You're then invited to take them and enjoy them either in Heisen Hall or in the lobby or to our faith formation uh, education time. Uh, Pastor Steve Gottschall Myers and uh, his spouse, Dr. Jean Goshel Myers uh, did a trip uh, down south, a civil rights uh, trip, and they are leading a conversation and sharing about their experiences and what they've learned in rooms 125, 127 today, uh, beginning at 945, and everyone is welcome to join them for that conversation. It's a two-part conversation this week and next week. Today we also uh, restart Sunday school, uh, and so there will be Sunday school for each child group. Uh, our our, our three kings uh, will be making a guest appearance in each of the classrooms and we'll have a small gift to give each of the children and so it's a great Sunday uh, to be back in Sunday school. Uh, if we are still looking for some folks to help out with our Martin Luther King uh, Day of Service that will be next Monday, not this Monday, but next Monday, January 16th. Thank you. The date's not actually in here. So <laughs> January 16th, uh, we are going to be pre we're going to be packaging meals in Heisen Hall from 10 beginning at 10 a.m. at 10 a.m. Uh, to help feed those who are food insecure in a partnership with Rise Against Hunger. So there is a sign up. It is open to everyone from as young as seven years old to as old as 177 years old. And so feel free to join us for that day of service. Next week at Trinity Lutheran Church on Sunday, August 5th, yeah, August, <laughs> January 15th, uh, has been invited to Bethlehem Baptist Church where our Trinity choirs will be singing in the Martin Luther King Jr. Remembrance uh, service. That will begin at 3 p.m. I emailed out in my e-note this week some information about that. There is a solidarity walk from Wissahickon High School that begins at 2 p.m. to Bethlehem uh, Baptist if you, uh, if you would like that as well. And so it's a great way for us to gather on a Sunday afternoon and to uh, give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr. next Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. There is a meeting for Appalachian Service Project tomorrow, January 9th at 7 p.m. in the parlor. Thank you for everyone who brought in your white gifts and uh, uh, items for babies and toddlers in our area that are in need. We will continue collecting throughout the week and next Sunday as well when all of the items will be blessed before they are taken and sent to those in our community. We're going to offer a blessing over those items. It is with joy to invite forward Vicar, uh, Vicar Kari to come forward. Uh, if you read my e-note that went out on Friday afternoon, Trinity is um, re-initiating, re-engaging with our local seminary, United Lutheran Seminary, and offering seminary, in offering seminary internships. Uh, we have not done this in a couple of decades, uh, but it's great to welcome Vicar, uh, Vicar Kari today as she begins her six-month internship with us. Vicar Kari is working on becoming an ordained deacon in the church. Uh, we will be blessing her uh, uh, in the, then in, in either next Sunday or the Sunday after, and we will be giving thanks to God, and so she'll be participating fully in the life of ministry. We'll be observing, and, and, and this is kind of a, a laboratory for her to experience the rhythm of a congregation, and so welcome, Vicar Kari, to Trinity Lutheran Church. Hi, 
Hi, as Pastor Fritz said, I'm Vicar Kari. I'm glad to meet all of you. Um, yeah, this is my fourth year at the seminary, and I'm just looking forward to the next six months. And if my husband, Dwayne, is over there, so he will also be a uh, faithful support staff. Awesome. We are so grateful to have you with us, Vicar Kari, and to have you as well joining us here at Trinity Lutheran Church and look forward to getting to know you. Uh, Vicar Kari will probably be offering some of you out for coffee or for lunch or spending some time with you as we continue to live into um, our calling as a congregation to be a teaching, to be a teaching parish and to be a teaching congregation as a place that lifts up leaders for uh, ordained ministry in the church. And so welcome again to you, Vicar Kari, and look forward to having you with us. People of God, I invite you to stand as you are able, as you are sent out with God's blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless you, strengthen you, uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. We are going to sing together, Wade in the Water. You're going to need your Cranberry Hymnal. It's hymn number 459. 459, the pages are at the top. Uh, 459, Wade in the Water. Let us sing together. this place, go in peace and follow the way of Jesus and speak to God. <laughs> 